A lot of people ask me how I balance writing and all of my other responsibilities. After all, finding time to write is one of the most significant challenges that all writers face. Subscriber Daniel Fellows asks, I was wondering if you could do a podcast or video on creating a social media presence such as creating videos or a podcast and fitting all those things together with actually writing. What's up, guys? My name is Michael Around with Author Level Up, helping you write world-class stories better and faster. I became an author in 2012 after a deadly illness made me realize that life is too short. 40 books and counting later, here I am, and I'm writing, balancing law school classes in the evening, a full-time job, and, and a family. Um, and if I can do it, I think any of you can. And I create these videos because I believe that each of you has a Stephen King level of storytelling ability, and you just need help unlocking it. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and click that little bell to get notifications when I release writing videos every week. And in this writing video, we're going to be talking about how I manage to do everything that I do on a daily basis. I'm going to offer four tips that have helped me balance everything. If you're watching this, it's probably safe to assume that you have a lot of responsibilities that demand your attention on a daily basis that aren't writing. And you can probably relate to being busy. Here are just some of the things that I balance on a daily basis. I'm a manager at a Fortune 100 insurance company, so I'm responsible for 10 people in addition to making sure that my business unit runs smoothly every day. I have a family, a wife, a four-year-old daughter, and a pet rabbit. <laughs> I'm also a son, a grandson, an uncle, and a friend. I attend law school classes in the evenings, usually eight months out of the year. So in addition to sitting in class, I have to study. Fortunately, I only take one class a semester, but it's still a lot of work. I also host the Ask Ally member Q&A podcast for the Alliance of Independent Authors and serve as an advisor to Ally in a number of ways. I also host the Writer's Journey podcast weekly, and I also do a lot of podcast interviews as a guest on other people's podcasts, usually one to two per month. I run the Author Level Up YouTube channel that you're currently watching, which is also weekly. And last but not least, I write books and create informational products. And that's not even everything, guys. <laughs> if you look at my life, it's a miracle that I can even write in the first place. Most people would just give up. How do I do it? The first tip I can offer is that I control my day very tightly. I follow a strict schedule. A typical day for me looks like this. I wake up at 5.30 a.m. every day, and I use that time to write, since my daughter and wife are still asleep and the house is quiet. If it's a YouTube day, I wake up at 4.45 a.m. to give me some time to set up my camera, lights, gear, wear makeup, and shoot my videos. Around 7.15 a.m. I go to work where my day is fully occupied, usually with lots of meetings. It takes me about 15 minutes to get to work, and during my commute I listen to audiobooks and publishing podcasts on two to three times speed so I can get through them quickly. I'm fortunate enough to be able to eat lunch with my wife about three days per week. On the days we don't eat together, I use that time to study for class if I need to. I'm usually off work around 4 p.m., which is another 15-minute commute where I listen to audiobooks and podcasts. Once I'm home, I play with my daughter for a little while, answer some emails, do a little writing, but not too much. Then it's dinner time, and in the warm months, I usually take evening walks with my family. After that, depending on my homework, I either sit down to write or I sit down to study. If it's a school night, I'm in class from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., so most of my night is occupied. But in the time before class and between breaks, I'm usually doing writing. I try to go to bed between 9.30 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. <laughs> Some days that happens, but most days it doesn't, honestly. If I'm editing videos or audio, then that tends to eat up time, and I'll stay up later so I can finish those. It's a balancing act, and I prioritize my tasks based on deadlines and how much time I have. Some days, I don't write very much at all. I'm taking care of business or marketing or other fires that pop up. It's all about prioritization. I've gotten very good at triaging tasks as they come up. The second tip I can offer is to outsource what you can afford. For example, I've had assistants in the past who helped me during busy times with emails or other routine tasks, like managing my calendar. Very soon, I'm going to start outsourcing my video editing, podcast editing, and my YouTube thumbnail design. Those are major time sucks for me, and I don't do them at a masterful level. By outsourcing these tasks, I free up five to six hours per week that I can spend doing other things, like writing. Not all of you can afford outsourcing things, and that's okay. Outsource what you can afford. Also, don't misunderstand me here. 
<laughs> I know there's going to be some comments about this. There are some parts of your business that you can't outsource, like business. Don't hand over the core parts of your publishing business to someone else because no one knows your business like you and no one knows your target audience like you. <laughs> That's asking for trouble. The third tip I can offer is to have a very tight focus. It looks like I'm scattered, but really I have three primary concentrations, work, writing, and school. Each complements my life in unique and unexpected ways. For example, being a manager at work has taught me how to delegate and develop others which is a skill that has come in handy as I've hired assistants and part-time help over the years with my writing business. Learning the foundations of a legal education has its benefits in all areas of life, especially working at a large corporation and being a writer. So I don't view these three areas of my life as conflicting, as some people probably would. There are honestly some days where my work ticks up most of my time, when I'm hiring or firing people, for example, or when a big project nears completion. There are times when work is fine, but then I have writing deadlines or midterms are approaching. I've learned to lean into these periods and they often go as quickly as they come. Long term, I'm not going to be in school forever. <laughs> and when I'm done with that, I'll be able to focus more on my writing. One day, if I'm fortunate enough to become a full-time author, I'll have benefited greatly from my corporate and legal experience when I'm running my own business. So again, I view all of the areas of my life as complementary, not competing. That being said, there's only so much you can split your focus, and I've said no to a lot of opportunities because I'm stretched to the max right now. <laughs> I say no a lot more than I say yes, and that's something a lot of people have a problem with early on in their careers. One thing you'll learn about me if you hang around me long enough is that I've eliminated a lot of things from my life that aren't writing related. I used to love video games and movies, but I don't watch them or play them anymore because they take time away from my writing. I used to have more friends than I do now, <laughs> but I decided that writing was more important than some of the surface level friendships that I had. When coworkers are out drinking and socializing on the weekends, I'm writing my next book. I'm single minded like that. I've been told that other authors are somewhat intimidated by me in real life when I talk about my writing and the things that I've done, partly because I'm really passionate and partly because all the things that I've done don't seem possible. Because of that, sometimes I have a hard time relating to others in basic conversation because I narrow my focus so tightly. I literally cannot talk about movies, games, or sports because I've cut them out of my life for the most part. <laughs> don't worry, I'm not that awkward, but I share that with you just to let you guys know how much I've been willing to sacrifice for my writing. What are you willing to sacrifice? The fourth tip I can offer you guys is to not waste time. I've shared before on this channel that I do most of my writing on my phone these days. I use Scrivener and Ulysses to write on the go. Some people cringe at that idea, <laughs> but with my schedule, it's the only way I can consistently write words every day. All of my books go to an editor, and, and the quality turns out the same at the end of the day anyway. It's a mindset shift to learn how to write books when you only have a couple of minutes here and there. Most people don't think about writing their novels in the backseat of an Uber car, or a long bus ride, or when they're standing in line at the supermarket. Most people want to just have huge blocks of time to write, you know, like two or three hours at a time. <laughs> but when you work a full-time job and have a family, that's just not realistic. So much writing time exists in your day if you just look for it. Set a micro goal every time you write on your phone. Can you write one sentence? Can you write two sentences? A hundred words? That's how you build a writing career in today's fast-paced world. This is one of the many secrets to my success and productivity. So thanks to Daniel Fellows for the question, and remember guys that you can always make video suggestions in the comments of my videos or tweet them to me at Michael Laron. I'd love to hear from you guys. What are some tips that you've learned to balance writing with a full-time job and other obligations? Let's all learn from each other, so drop me a comment. If this is your first time watching, remember to subscribe and especially click that little bell or you might miss my new videos and that would be a sad thing. If you want more tips on how to balance writing with all the demands that life throws at you, check out my book Be a Writing Machine, which is available in ebook, paperback, and audio at your favorite book retailer. If you're working a full-time job and wondering how to make the words happen, this book has the answers for you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.